The Nigel Farage Show. Good morning, everybody. I hope Sunday finds you well. The National Health Service needs more money. In fact, it needs a lot more money, and we'll talk a bit about that over the course of the next hour. Question is, where is it going to come from? Now, remember back during the referendum campaign, one of the most contentious issues during the campaign, and I have to say, ever since, involved... Boris Johnson and the big red coach that toured with him around the country. Here was Boris talking during that campaign. If we vote leave on June the 23rd, we can take back control of £350 million a week and spend on our priorities here in this country, including on the National Health Service. Well, ever since then, Boris has been pilloried for daring to use that figure, because it was the gross figure before the rebate and before money comes back in the form of uh, money for rich landowners, scientific grants, etc. But he's never, ever, ever, Boris, backed down from it for one second, but it's been used, really been used as a stick by the Remain side again and again. And yet, blow me down, in an interview with Tom Swarbrick on LBC, played earlier this morning, the Prime Minister made this pledge. We're setting out a funding settlement for the uh, NHS, which will be over a period of years. And by the end of five years, in 2023-24, the NHS will be getting £20 billion more in real terms that year than it is today. That's a lot of money. It's a significant increase in the amount of money being spent on the NHS. But this is about ensuring we can deliver world-class health care into the future. Where's that money coming from? We will be able, when we leave the European Union, to spend the money that otherwise we would have been sending to the European Union, because currently we spend uh, vast, uh, you know, significant Mm. sums of money each year to the EU, we'll be able to use that money on our priorities, and the NHS is our number one priority, and we as a country will contribute a bit more. Do you know how much the Brexit dividend per week is going to be? Because, as you know, lots of claims have been made about how much money can go from the EU budget now into the NHS. What I can tell you is what this extra money going into the NHS means per week. Now, of course, uh, people may remember seeing a figure on the side of a bus, (laughs) £350 million extra a week for the NHS in in cash. Actually, what we're doing, what I'm announcing, means that in 2023-24, there will be around £600 million a week in cash, more going into the NHS. So the Brexiteers weren't lying? We in fact, have, they undersold it. We have, made, we have made a conscious decision that the NHS is our priority. I think that's important because... For the last 70 years, it's been there, as I say, for all of us. But it's important that we make sure that it's there for the future. When you say we as a country will have to contribute more, does that mean income tax rises? Well, we'll be setting out, the Chancellor will set out uh, in due course before the spending review, he'll set out how uh, the whole package of funding that that we'll be putting. But it it is right, I think, that we say to people that because the NHS is so important to, to us, that we do look at asking uh, for the country to contribute more, but in a fair and balanced way. I think that's important. So, yes, we take the advantage that we've got of the money we're not no longer sending to the European Union, but also in putting the amount of money we want to put into the NHS for the future. I think we do have to look at contributing more. Well, there we are. Theresa May saying there's going to be a Brexit dividend. There's going to be lots of money. Much of it will go into the National Health Service. And in doing this, uh, the Prime Minister, I think in many ways, is using political spin very skillfully and very well. Uh, Because that's exactly the kind of thing that Leave voters want to hear. In fact, in many cases, I think they're desperate to hear something that is at least vaguely positive coming from the Prime Minister. Now, I think the truth of it is, and, you know, we've got Conservatives supporting newspapers like the Sunday Telegraph. Big headline, NHS to get extra £384 million a week. The Prime Minister herself has used a figure as high as £600 And that's because, of course, these increases are being phased in over five years, so they compound up. It's clever, because what it really does is it masks... It masks very cleverly (laughs) the fact that taxes will need to go up. But let's get back to talking about 
Brexit. And let's talk about that pledge, that £350 million a week. Is Boris Johnson now, finally, fully vindicated? Well, I'm going to ask the opinion of a veteran Eurosceptic. And I say that because I've only been campaigning against EU membership for a pitiful 25 years. Uh, my first guest today has been doing it for half a century. Uh, he is John Mills. He joins me this morning. John, hello. Morning to you, Nigel. Good morning. Now, you were a, a senior officer in the Vote Leave campaign when Boris was going out round the country with this 350 million figure on the side of his big red coach. Were you always confident and happy, John, with that number? I was always a little bit queasy about that number because it was the gross figure rather than the net figure. But it was a very large sum, and we do pay a very large sum every year to the European Union. And I think it drew attention to the size of that sum very effectively. It keyed in with the NHS, which is a really major issue of concern for lots of people. So I think it was a very effective way of bringing the uh, size of the amount of money we were paying to the European Union to everybody's attention. Yeah, it was interesting to hear uh, the Prime Minister even using the word vast, the vast amounts of money that we pay to Brussels. I thought it was a very big Eurosceptic pitch from Theresa May today. But John, isn't the truth of it? And, 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 you know, it's a great soundbite, and people will hear that this morning and say, yippee. But isn't the truth of it, as the Prime Minister has signed us up to a transition period, we're effectively going to go on paying the net £10 billion a year for the next few years anyway? Well, I think that's a big problem. I think that instead of going for a clean Brexit, which is what I would have favoured, we're going to get stuck in the single market and stuck in the cast of junior, but not very careful. And it'll go on and on and on. And in the meantime, we're going to go on paying all the money to the European Union. In which case, what will happen with the NHS is the increase in funding will come from tax instead of the yeah. Brexit dividend. Yeah. I think there's a big fight to, uh, over, to try to avoid that happening now. Yeah, I mean, looking at these numbers, it's already going to be threepence on tax. And if we haven't, you know, and if we increase the spending by 20 billion plus, uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, the implications for taxation are really quite great. Looking at the big picture, um, and by the way, Boris, John, must be very happy this morning. But looking at the big picture, John, I mean, are you still... And, and, you know, you had a senior role back in the 1975 referendum, so you've been doing this longer than me, longer than almost anybody. <laughs> um, and, and well done for your persistence. But, but do you still feel confident that at 11 o'clock on the 29th of March next year, we will leave the European Union? Well, I think formally that may well happen. But in practice, I'm not at all sure it will I mean, I think we had a pretty clear statement from the government about what they wanted to achieve, which I think was backed by a large proportion of the people, certainly the voters in the Labour Party, if not the MPs, uh, that we were going to come out of the single market in the customs union. We we're going to have a Canada-type deal, which I think would have satisfied most people most of the way. Now I think it's a real danger we're going to get stuck in uh, the worst of all worlds, really, where we've got no control over what the European Union does. But our commercial policy, our economic policy is substantially controlled through the customs union and the single market. And we're in a sort of a vassal state situation, the fifth or sixth largest economy in the world, with large sections of what we do being controlled by somebody outside the country. Is there a need, John, for a new campaign? <laughs> well, <laughs> I think there may well be if we get to a stage where this happens. Yeah. Uh, although I think the big problem is that we've got no majority in Parliament that's prepared to walk away from a bad deal. And this just hands all the cards to the European Union negotiators, putting us in a very difficult position. So quite how we're going to get the leverage to stop this happening, I don't think it's very clear. No. No. And one final question, John. You, through your business, as I understand it, import a lot of product that is manufactured in China. That's right, isn't it? That is correct, yes. Now, now, we're being told by those who say we have to stay part of the customs union that unless you're part of it, it is a nightmare to get goods into this country from overseas. Just tell me, how, do you, how does your product come into the UK and how difficult is it? It really isn't very difficult at all. I was just gobsmacked to hear these suggestions that it was going to cost £20 billion pounds extra, £20 billion pounds extra to stay uh, or to come outside the customs union. Uh, this is about 10 times what my experience is in terms of costs. Uh, I think it's more like 1% than 10%. Yep. And I must say, it does seem to be really wrong that we should take decisions about the future of the country based on such inaccurate information as that. 
OK, John, thank you very much indeed. Well, that was John Mills, you know, who took a... He was vice chairman of the Vote Leave campaign. He says even he was slightly queasy about the £350 million figure a week. Boris was always very confident. Has Mrs May vindicated Boris today? Andrew in Halifax, what do you think? Good morning, Nigel. Good morning. Well, I, I voted leave, as you'll probably be aware by now, but I certainly didn't vote leave because of any promises to do with the NHS. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the NHS is a colossal pain in the backside in this country, quite frankly. It's do you? I do. It's a 70th thing. birthday. You've got no happy birthday wishes for it, Andrew? Not a bit. Really? Not a bit. Nope. Because I just wonder how many more years we're going to have to plough pound after pound into health provision. Mm. Uh, in this country. I mean, I I think there are three principal problems with the NHS, Nigel. One is the obscene amounts of waste and overpaid senior executives. Yep. Um, The second one are are people abusing the health service for cosmetic and or the remedying of faux psychological issues. And thirdly, which you will completely concur with, is the appalling amounts of health tourism uh, that we have. And, you know, we must be the only country in the world where you can live here for all of two minutes pay not a penny in tax and yet avail of every NHS provision going. It's Andrew, I, 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 I don't disagree with any of the three points you've just made, but I would say this to you. Any government that doesn't keep increasing spending on the NHS would face electoral death in this country. Andrew, I thank you for your call, your comments, your criticisms, but even Andrew hasn't quite got it. There is one reason, above all, that we need to keep increasing, massively spending on the National Health Service. And nobody, the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, Jeremy Corbyn, even wants to talk about it. I'm going to tell you what that is in a moment. But for now, you're listening to the Sunday edition of the Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC, and it's 10.15. Spending on the National Health Service has to go up every single year significantly, not just because of administrative waste, not just because of health tourism, not just because of many, many factors where one can criticise the day-to-day running and management of the NHS, including, of course, Mr Blair's famous private finance initiative deals. No, the real reason is this, and nobody will talk about it, and it is the British population is rising by half a million people every single year, and 75% of that is because of people coming into this country and those that have come having children. Three quarters of our population growth in the last few years and now is because of open door immigration. But let's not talk about that. If you've got half a million people more a year needing health service provision, is it any wonder we need to increase spending? And of course, part of the argument around Brexit was that by leaving we can take back control of our borders and significantly reduce the numbers coming into Britain. But there's little prospect of that. And as I say, it is the elephant in the room and nobody wants to talk about it because immigration has disappeared completely off the political radar in this country, which is odd when we've got a new Italian government that's been voted in on immigration, a Hungarian government now with a massive majority because of their view of immigration, and maybe, just maybe... A German Chancellor who's been in position for over a decade, who may be toppled this very week on the issue of immigration. So immigration is dominating European politics, but not being discussed here. But hey, Boris went round and said there'll be a Brexit dividend. Up to £350 million a week could be poured into the NHS, and he's been backed up by the Prime Minister this morning. Maybe she's, I don't know, supporting him as her successor, but he will certainly be enjoying his eggs and bacon this morning, thinking, wow, I've been fully legitimised. And I want to know from you, do you think this does legitimise everything Boris stood for? And if you do, call me on 0345 6060 973. Maybe you think Boris has really just got lucky here, in which case you can text to 84850. Or maybe you think, actually, this is all spin. It's not real. If we have a transition period, there is no net saving because we've promised up to 39 billion as a leaving fee. That leaving fee in many ways is continued membership, uh, most of it, for two or three years. Um, And if that's how you feel, if you think it's a cynical attempt 
to cover up significant tax rises, which it may well be, uh, then please, you can you can um, tweet your views using the hashtag Farage and LBC at LBC. And, of course, you can watch us on Facebook and comment there too. And so far, there are one or two cynics out there, I see. Hi, Nige. How can anyone believe a word of what Mrs May says? What total rubbish, says Kez in Dorset. Let's go to a first-time caller from Broadstairs in Kent. It's Al. Good morning. Ah, oh, good morning, Nigel. Good morning. Um, welcome, welcome uh, to the uh, show. The south, in South, south Barrett. Yes, and uh, still, a, still a rather contested. Uh, we we can't say too much legally about it, but st- no, of st- st- still one or two reverberations from the last election <laughs> there. Um, now, Al, you know, I mean, here we are. Were you a Brexit voter, Al? Yes, you were. So, very much so. So, are you um, pleased about all this money from the Brexit dividend? I'm a little bit sceptical, but what I think is that this announcement that the Prime Minister has made today is in preparation for the possibility, and I think it's a high possibility, of a no-deal exit next year. Wow. OK. And is that because of Monsieur, Monsieur Barnier's total intransigence making well, it... Oh, he's not moving at all, is he? Actually, no, he is. He's making it harder. Um, he, he, he's <laughs> twisting the Northern Ireland ratchet as much as he possibly can. Indeed, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have to say that, you know, I help coin the phrase with a group of economists in the referendum campaign of no deal is better than a bad deal, Alan. I still, I still very much believe that. Even if it does, even if it did cause, you know, short-term disruption, I, mm-hmm. I, I think a bad deal that, as John Mills, who was on, uh, you know, earlier, said, could wrap us up for years in the worst of all worlds. But do you think? I mean, given the muscle flexing out we've seen this week from Dominic Grieve and and Anna Soubry and all these sort of people, do you think Parliament would allow the Prime Minister to get away with a no deal? I think that's um, something that uh, is a possibility, um, and I think this is what she's foreseeing. I think she's she's mm. trying to set the scene for 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 a showdown. So whatever because bad news, whatever bad news is to come, money's going to the NHS. Be happy, NHS. everybody. Yeah, it's quite clever. Actually, tell you what, forget the facts and the figures and the numbers. It's quite a clever spin, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I sort of thought to myself this morning, there'll be people rushing to get their kids off to football training or whatever, and they haven't got much time for the news or the newspapers. They'll hear the headlines and they'll think, oh, this is really good. Al, thank you for your call. And Al thinks she's getting the good news in first because there are tougher times just around the corner. Have I heard Mrs May's latest manipulative statement correctly? What is the year the NHS is to commence receiving this investment, 23-24, bearing in mind that we're now in 2018? How many elections between now and 2023? Well, she certainly won't be there in 2023. That I can be pretty certain of. Don't trust her. Don't believe her, says Caroline from Hans. You really are a very, very cynical old lot, aren't you? I mean, this wonderful news the Prime Minister has just given you, this huge Brexit dividend money for the NHS. I can't understand what's wrong with you. Uh, David is calling from Bracknell. Good morning, David. Oh, good morning to you, Nigel. Um... Yeah, there's one other reason, actually, which nobody ever appears to talk about. I know what's going on. Financial malpractice and and bad management. Well, uh, big management, um, David. The figure I saw Too was... Too management, yes, and bad management. Was it something like... Mismanagement. Mis- 45% increase in administrative staff in the NHS since 1997. Yeah. yeah no, I, I, David, I, I, I mean, look, th- 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 there are all sorts of things... With the National Health Service that could be improved. You know, I campaigned. Well, that's not going to happen until you get a government with the guts to do it. And they don't just need to appear to want to tackle the situation, just pretending it's not happening. That's what I find most incredible. Most people, David, when they're polled, and yeah. it's a fairly emotional question, I suppose, but when yeah. people are asked, would you be prepared to pay more tax? for a better health service... Well, we're all going to say yes to that a few yes. times. But the issue is that there's something more serious going on here until we actually tackle the, the uh, fundamental um, issues that I just uh, mentioned. Yep. I don't think much is going to well, change. You know? I don't think you're wrong. And, David, of course, your constituency, one that was very much in the news Philip last Lee, week, yes. with your, your, your local MP, Philip Lee, um, <laughs> you know, resigning a junior ministerial post, uh, now joining the anti-Brexit rebels um but do you i mean david when the prime minister says this morning that there's going to be this brexit dividend 
by 2023. Do you believe her? Um, well, I, I don't really know enough about the ins and outs of politics to, to not believe it, but I, I'd be surprised if that really happened. <laughs> I, think, I, I think, to be honest, well, I mean, if we did just leave and stop paying the money and forge new mm. global trade deals and cut regulation... Okay, right. but we should be doing and, yeah. Well, that's what I think too. And uh, and and you're obviously a Eurosceptic, David. What's mm. go, what's mm. going to happen to Philip Lee well, in I'll that constituency? Maybe a Eurosceptic. What's going to happen here? Yeah. Um, I think he could be in some difficulty. Uh, the proper number of people are not happy about what's happened. Mm. He said he knows that the majority of people in Bracknell voted to come out, and yes. he's uh, quite clearly very keen to remain, isn't he? So, what well, um, fanatical! And David, you were about to say what made you a Eurosceptic. Yes, the European Social Fund. I, I witnessed, well, I didn't witness that. I, I've, I've heard and I've seen of, um, financial malpractice in the European Social Fund funding a lot of so-called training schemes in this country in, in the via the DD, DWP, and that, that a lot of fraud going on there. Mm, well, I, no, no, we, we can't throw around allegations of fraud uh, willy-nilly, but I understand exactly what you're saying. David, I thank you. On Twitter, I get the truth about Theresa May's NHS funding promise is that she sees the Brexit bar lie as an embarrassing totem of the Remain campaign. I don't agree with that. She wasn't part of the Leave campaign. She was part of the Remain campaign. And given how disloyal publicly Boris has been to her again and again and again, she could have left that problem neatly parked with him. In fact, what she's chosen to do is to pick it up, to link EU withdrawal with the National Health Service, which is exactly what Vote Leave wanted to happen during the campaign. Uh, and in doing so, she's given Boris a hell of a short-term political boost. That's my view. What does Mark in Hitchin in Hertfordshire think? Good morning, Mark. Yeah, uh, morning, Nigel. Yeah, well, we all any, once you go past the headline, it's a total lie. And we know it's a total lie because the government's already told us that. It's already <laughs> told us that we're going to take a £15 billion pound hit after Brexit. So when we get our £10 billion pounds back from the EU, that will fill only £10 billion of the £15 billion that we're going to lose. And not only that, when we get the £10 billion back, they've already committed to spend that money elsewhere. They've already committed, for example, to give some of the money to the farmers, to give them back their subsidies. So it's just one great big... No, that's not, if... that, that, that's not quite true, actually, because, because the net figure... The net figure is 9 or £10 billion a year. That's after the farmers have been paid. But, hey, I don't want to split hairs, Mark. But do you think politically, politically, it's quite a clever headline this morning? I think it's a damn right lie. And I think people are going to fall for it. Because, as you said, people are going to be rushing out the yeah, door. Yeah. And, and, but but what, what people must remember is in the Conservative manifesto, it said they would not be borrowing and they would not mm. be raising taxes. So they've gone against their manifesto. And if they really were serious about getting money... Last Friday, Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs issued the report, which they issue every year, to point out they haven't collected £33 billion pounds of taxes. So why don't they go and collect the £33 billion it would help, wouldn't that the it? government has... To, well, it would, pay, it would pay that straight away. And the, the reality is, the only way you're going to be able to fund this, there is no money coming from Brexit. You've already had Paul Johnson very annoyed from the IFS all over the media saying, why are they saying it? They know it's not true because they've told us it's not true already. Yeah, I mean, I mean, whether Brexit costs money or not, what is true, Mark, and, and Paul Johnson's made this point, I mean, 100% with him, is that if we're going to go on paying during the transition period, the equivalent of a full membership fee, that money won't be free. A deeply sceptical Mark from Hitchin there. And Martin on Facebook says, 600 million a week... We're going to need a bigger bus. Love it. You're listening to the Sunday edition of the Nigel Farage Show, exclusive in LBC, and it's now 10.30. And Prime Minister May is all over the media this morning, including an interview here with Tom Swarbrick on LBC. And she's making this big, big announcement. 20 billion plus coming for the National Health Service, and much of it coming from the Brexit dividend. Was indeed Boris's £350 million a week written on the side of the big red bus actually correct all along or is it just very very cynical political spin that is covering up really quite big tax rises but i tell you what however cynical and so far nearly all of you have been however cynical you may be it is a pretty clever political move may not be very honest and i don't think it's very honest because for goodness sake if she wants a transition period we're going to go on paying nine or ten billion a year to be part of it for the next three years so you know it's nonsense 
in terms of finance, but politically, it's probably really very clever. And all of this will happen by 2023-24, when she won't even be in politics anyway. It's easy to make promises, isn't it, when you know you're not going to be there. Tina on Facebook deeply cynical. A promise way off in the future means nothing. Robert says, as long as she sticks to getting us out of the EU, I will always get behind her. Well, she did sound a little bit more determined this morning, perhaps, than she's been for some time. On Twitter, I get, the money will not be used for training, and Brexit is still forcing doctors and nurses to leave. It won't fix the problem. I'm not sure that's right, because the other announcement today that she's made, and this is not getting much publicity, but it's confirmation that any cap on non-EU doctors and nurses is going to be lifted completely. So you can say we desperately need doctors and nurses, and I can say why the hell aren't we training doctors and nurses, uh, but it's yet again, yet again, a weakening of the government's immigration policy. And if Some of you this morning listening to this in 2010, 2015 and 2017 voted Conservative, you were told... In each of those manifestos, they would reduce net migration to tens of thousands a year. Of course, they never meant it. They just wanted you to vote for them. Maybe you're beginning to feel a bit done, because the main reason the NHS needs vastly more amounts of money each year is our population is rising by half a million people a year, and this government is doing absolutely diddly squat to address the net numbers coming into Britain every single year. Andy from Bristol is my next caller. Good morning, Andy. And good morning. Long time no speak. Yeah, good to have you back on the show. So, is this clever politics by Theresa May? Well, as I said to your research, oh, your uh, people on the phone. Yep. Um, I suspect there might be a general election in the air. Oh. I think she's had a bet. She may have to go to the country. Oh, you're a super cynic, Andy, aren't you? Well, I tell you what is interesting is now we have a Conservative Party pledging more future money for the NHS than the Labour Party. And defence, of course. Oh, I mean, it's, all, it's all going ahead, isn't it? New aircraft for the aircraft carrier arriving. Yep. And yep. Uh, we've had all our Christmases in one, one go. We don't mean the last week. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is it? H- HMS uh, Agincourt. All signed off, ready to go. Yep. Is it is it Andy that she's got such trouble with her own backbenches? And... The prime minister is no fool, and neither are many of the people in cabinet. And they must be. I I just wonder if they see stormy weather as the navy yep. bay ahead yep. and are edging their bets. Um, uh, and it wouldn't be a bad thing, I don't think. Would well, you know, Andy, I said on this Sunday morning show about eight weeks ago that I thought there was the prospect of an October general election coming up, and a lot of people sort of raised their eyebrows, but she she really has got a problem, hasn't she, with some of this Brexit legislation? She really, really does, because, you know, Philip Lee, Anna Soubry, all these people, Ken Clark, they are determined, and Dominic Grieve, the mastermind of all of this, they are determined to get a veto on any final deal or no deal. Uh, And maybe she simply hasn't got the numbers. Maybe her best prospect, Andy, is to have another general election. And I know the last one rather blew up in her face. But maybe, given where the polls are, she wins a a proper majority. I just consider it, and obviously you're into this business, I'm not. I just think that uh, there are going to be problems coming up now in the next two two years, two and a half years, not only with Brexit, but so many things. Sadly, Parliament doesn't reflect any decent politicians on all sides of the House. I mean, the whole thing is a mess. I personally wish Scotland had have actually voted to uh, to leave. I think all that would have been better out of the way as well. We've, we've been without Scotland since uh, well, Elizabeth the first. But, but, but Andy, but but but, but, but Andy, I mean, I mean, the fact is that that you know, however much the SNP wanted Scottish separatism, um, it didn't happen then, and it's further away from happening now, isn't it? That's what I'm saying. I'll let you get on anyway. There's my time. Uh, no, no, Andy. Listen, it's a great point. Thank you. And Andy's saying a general election could be just round the corner. That's why she's doing it. I have to say, there is a certain strong logic, is there not, in what Andy's saying? You can almost see this, can't you? You know, vote for me. I'm going to deliver Brexit. All the money is going to the NHS. It's a good, strong, simple message. Whether it's true or not, of course, is irrelevant. This is politics we're talking about. Career politics. Nigel, please explain why Boris's statement was contentious. He didn't say 
that we'd have 350 million more. He said we'd take back control of 350 million. Isn't this completely correct since the previous rebates weren't cash, but specifically uh, blah, blah, blah. Adam, technically, Adam, you're absolutely right. If you read the wording on the bus, the way that it was put, it was about taking back control and spending more on the NHS. But hey, that is not the big takeout that everybody got the big takeout everybody got is that it's an extra 350 million a week for the nhs and you can't argue it any other way morning nigel i think that politics wise this announcement about the nhs is just a sweetener for brexiteers before the announcements that kick them in the teeth says john from sydney oh gosh you've spoilt my sunday morning john let's go to morris who's calling from edgeware good morning morris good morning to you nigel so uh, is this clever <coughs> politics morris all, all politics is clever. You were involved with it enough, and you still are. Well, some of it's pretty stupid, Morris, actually. But, um... <laughs> yes, well, yes, thank you for saying that, because uh, yeah, it's the House of Commons, but it's not necessarily the House of Common Sense, but still. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was... Morris, the one thing from last week... Of all the global events last week, and there were some amazing things, weren't there, with, you know, Donald Trump in, 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 in uh, signing up in Singapore with the North Koreans, a pact, and all sorts of things going on. But the one, th- the, the one impression that stuck with me over the course of the weekend was seeing that parliamentary committee last week. Um, all, every single one of them Remainers, and nearly every single one of them representing Leave constituencies. And I think, uh, despite the fact that we had this referendum, I don't think the gap between our career politicians and ordinary people has been closed at all. Well, anyhow, Nigel, what I wanted to come on to you about is regarding it's great to have however much money that the government is going to spend, uh, give to the NHS. But what we haven't heard is whether the Treasury and the senior management, if they've got any sense, are going to t- uh, haven't told us that we're going to now crack down on the wastage of money that goes on in the health service. Some years ago in Hampshire, in a hospital there, spent money on a whole new uh, computer system, and it was never used. But all the money was spent on that, or whatever money was spent on that. Secondly, in my neck of the woods, a hospital, a, per, a person in the department decided to rebrand the name of the hospital organisation. Yep. And, the, and, the, and the chairman just waved it through. Of course, when I stood up and complained about it, sit down, we've got, you're not allowed to speak about anything in this particular meeting. I said, ah, I and many others are paying your wages. You'll listen. How, how much extra money is going to be spent on new stationery, new signage and everything else? And then some bright spots will keep a careful watch on it. So I said, you wouldn't have to keep a careful watch on it because you wouldn't. You don't need to do it. Mm. You don't need to rebrand anything in this particular area. And now I have received from two, uh, because I've got two separate points at two seven hospitals, I've got one lot of information from one, uh, uh, from each hospital uh, regarding an appointment. And then I find from that particular area, and then I find another on the, in the post, another two lots of letters from <laughs> another part of the NHS down in Bexley. Now, what? Why? No, but, no, Mar- so, 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 Morris, if you were asked, if you were asked, are you happy to pay more taxes for a better health service, you would say... I these- would be happy to pay extra tax if we knew that the money was being spent wisely. Yeah, no, I, I think... want to know... That's a very fair know, point. And I think everyone else wants to know, why is it we are allowing people into this country to you misuse and it's known misuse the national health for money they haven't even paid for morris you raise a fair point and it's a big concern of many many of our callers on this subject that i've had over the last 18 months uh, that i've been here at lbc you're listening to the sunday edition of the niger farage show exclusively on lbc and it's now 10 45 it's the big announcement 20 billion extra a year for the national health service and that's just for starters and lots of it going to come from the brexit dividend was boris after all right to put 350 million pounds a week on the side of that big red bus is she just really getting us ready for a general election is she preparing us for lots of very bad news and huge concessions to come well all of that i think is possible craig on facebook certainly thinks so when he says if she wins a majority she'll have a green light for brexit if she loses out corbyn gets the blame now sean thinks there's cleverer work afoot here he said 
Is this also not a hidden warning to Brussels that we can walk away with no deal to pay for it? I think it's two fingers to Brussels and Barnier. Sean, I wish that were true. I really, really wish that were true. Uh, but as we head towards the countdown to June the 28th, which is the next big summit in Brussels, that Theresa May will attend with all the other uh, Prime Ministers and Presidents from around Europe. Um, I don't think the Prime Minister is going to go there and bang the table or swing a handbag. Um, I suspect there are many, many more concessions that we are going to make. And I think she just wants us to get over the line on March the 29th at 11pm. Uh, and of course that will be a big historic break with the treaties, but we could, and we had John Mills on earlier, veteran Eurosceptic making the point we could finish up actually in a worse place during that transition period. I'm going to Tuscany to speak to Tony. Good morning, Tony. Good morning, Nigel. I think for the past week or so, Marisa, uh, Mrs May has been on a charm offensive to soften us up for a general election. You do, yeah. This was the big gun today, the, the, the NHS thing. But if you look for the last week, she was on the television telling us how sorry she was she didn't empathise more with the people in the fire in London. Yeah, Grenfell, she yeah. Managed to get, she managed to get Canada's quite quickly to that young guy in the hospital who needs it. Yes. With the help of Sabi Drabi. Yeah, okay. He came down like a ton of bricks on that old MP who voted against the uplifting, or whatever you call it, the cameras and the Up, skirts. Upskirting, yep, yep, yep. And she knows that Corbyn has more positions on Brexit than the Kama Sutra has. <laughs> and the people that's who really like, want that's to good. see that's Diane a Abbott good line. running things in the Home Office... I, said that so I think external forces mm. are so in her favour because Merkel's impotent. Macron is a two-faced wimp. You know he has closed the border between Italy and France and then complained this morning that we didn't hear Italy take that boat of refugees. Uh, yeah, there's, closed the border there's a lot. Into France anyway. There's a lot of hypocrisy. What is happening, of course, Tony, all across Europe is, and and you're there in Italy, where Salvini. Oh, yeah. You know what we're calling. You know what we're calling Salvini, the captain. That's his nickname. The captain. Well, I tell you what, he's a pretty. Yeah, that's his He's a pretty effective captain. His popularity ratings are going through the roof. And His popularity ratings went from 20% to 53% in know. the last two weeks. I know, I know, I know. I was out last night with some friends, and they said, we were talking about it, obviously, because we're all political nerds. And one of my mates stood up and said, well... Italy's not in the World Cup, but at least we've got Salvini. <laughs> well, one thing for certain, Tony, for me, for my money, Merkel is the past, Salvini is the future. Tony, thank you. Another caller who thinks she's getting us ready for a general election. And when I mused on this a couple of months ago here on a Sunday morning, I'm beginning to think, I really am beginning to think, it may well be the only way she has out of this, because the numbers in Parliament aren't there. Much of that, I believe, is her fault for a total lack of leadership. I was on the train this morning and a uh, chap said to me, can I come and sit with you? And I had a chat with him and he just turned 16 and he said, uh, Mr Farage, can I ask you, is she the worst Prime Minister ever? I thought, well, where'd you get that from? Oh, he said, just listening to my grandparents talk. Well, whether she's the worst Prime Minister ever or not is up to you to make your own minds up. But she's certainly one of the least decisive, uh, which is why today seems to be a bit outside the box. It's not the kind of thing she normally does. Um, something's around the corner. General election, big concessions, I don't know. What does Julia from Herne Hill make of it all this morning? Hello. Hello, Nigel. What an honour to speak to you. We're firm Brexiteers and we think you're another Cromwell. <laughs> <laughs> well, Julia, uh, it's very sweet of you, but Cromwell was a Puritan. I could never be called that, of course. But um, right, OK. So, so, well, so, 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 what's she doing, Julia? Why, why is she doing this and why now? I think um, I've been cursing the life out of the woman, actually, but I think she's probably fairly smart in many ways, and I think she may be putting herself on the side of the angels with putting this, uh, saying that Brexit money will save the NHS and all the rest of it, yeah. if we believe it or not, but it's putting, uh, with the vote coming up on Wednesday, it's going to embarrass the Remainers who are clutching up against her. And it may be a ploy to just say, well, look, you, you, you sod, you know, you're, you're, you're causing trouble. We could have all this extra money for the NHS and just stop misbehaving. It may be a clever ploy with Wednesday coming up. I, I'm looking on the angle. Yeah. 
politics. Yeah, no, I mean, look, Gina, I, I think it is clever politics. I've said so repeatedly this morning. It is, it is from her perspective, it is good positioning. Whether the numbers add up or not, I don't know. And I've been saying, is it to stave off bad news? Is it to prepare for a general election? And you've added a third dimension, which is, you know, dare defy me in the House of Commons and you're stopping money going for the health service. Julia, it's a very, very credible idea. I thank you very much indeed for your call. Paul from Stanmore says to me, how can there be a Brexit dividend if we have to pay 40 billion to leave? Well, Paul, I have to say a couple of things on that. Firstly, one of the reasons that the exit bill is as huge as it is, is effectively during transition, we are continuing to pay a membership fee, which, of course, means this money won't be freed up for some time to come. But also, what I want to hear from her is this. We won't be paying a penny of an exit fee unless you give us a reasonable trade deal. Now, that strikes me as being a fair, sensible and balanced negotiation. And occasionally we hear the line... You know, nothing is agreed until everything's agreed. But Monsieur Barnier doesn't look at it like that. Monsieur Barnier says, right, we've got this promise. You know, let's put that in the bottom drawer and move on to the next issue. And I'd love to see her on June the 28th in Brussels. I'd love to see her say, you know, unless you're sensible with us, you ain't getting a penny. That's what I'd like to see, but I won't be holding my breath. I'm waiting for it. Beverly is calling from Maidenhead. Good morning, Beverly. Good morning, Nigel. Um, Nigel, I'm a keen Brexiteer and I'm extremely worried about all this mm. because I'm, I'm fearful that if there is a general election and she vastly increases her majority, yeah. she can then ignore the Brexiteers in her party. <laughs> Do you know, when she called that snap election in 17, mm. I thought, if she, you know, she was 20 points ahead in the polls, I thought far from being good from a Brexit perspective, this is actually very bad from a Brexit perspective. Yeah. Um, and in a sense, you know, the DUP holding her feet to the fire is, I think, not a bad thing in many ways. They've been pretty Absolutely. firm. They've been Absolutely. pretty firm on the yeah. integrity of the UK and on Brexit. I mean, you're there in Maidenhead, Beverly. She's your MP, isn't she? <laughs> Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> we did our best. In Come on, you've got the Nigel you've campaigning got, you've to got try the, and get You've, you've got the Prime party. Minister. You've got the honour of having the Prime Minister as your local MP. You should be very proud of that in Maidenhead, no, surely. No, I've lived here for 30 years and my vote has never counted for anything. I voted UKIP, you know, from 2010 onwards. And yep. You know, I'm now very much involved with UKIP, and I'm 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 genuinely very very fearful about all of this. Mm, mm. Well, she's putting a lot of big good news out there, Beverly. For some reason, we just don't quite exactly know what it is. But um, but I'm I'm um, yeah I'm worried. Do you think Beverly a general election is possible if she can't get votes through Parliament? Uh, I I think she might go for it, and as, as I say, uh, the trouble is. That, that most voters aren't that interested in politics. They don't know what's going on, and and that they might very well. They she might very well end up with a large majority, and as I say, and then just ignore all the Brexiteers in her party. It's more important to her to hold the Conservative Party together and keep the, the Conservative Party in power. I don't think she cares about the country. Oh, I think she does care about the country, Beverly, but but she's just not a real conviction politician. And who would have thought, Beverly, that we'd have finished up, you know, who would have thought that we'd, we'd finish up with a Prime Minister through the Brexit process who voted Remain? Beverly, I thank you. I've got time for one last call on this. Bob from Northampton. Hello, Bob. Good morning. Yeah, morning, Nigel. Just a quick one about this whole uh, money, extra money for the NHS. I actually think it's a bit of a red herring. Um, and the major problem is it's not the money. You could give the NHS all the money in the world. I don't think it'd be enough. The bigger problem is there's too many people using the NHS. Thank you, Bob. Which, which... Thank you. Thank you. Someone at last agreeing with me that a population rising by half a million people every year is putting huge, unsustainable pressure on it, isn't it? Yeah, that's correct. And I think on a, on a wider issue, it affects just about everything else that's going on in the country. This, this country, I believe, only has the infrastructure for about 50, 55 million people. That affects schools, the roads, education, the NHS, doctors, everything. 
and we're rapidly heading towards 70 million. You won't find any other mainstream politicians agreeing, of course, no. because they'll be branded racist, xenophobes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and Bob, it's the same when you talk about housing. You know, you say, yeah. well, surely if there are more people and we, and we have to build a new dwelling every four minutes just to cope with immigration, isn't this an issue? But as you say, you're branded an extremist for doing so. Bob, I thank you for your call. I thank all of you for your calls. Well, lots of talk there about a general election, which is interesting, isn't it? So Jeremy Corbyn this morning has lashed back at critics of the Labour Live Festival that, of course, took place yesterday. There were photographs showing quite a low turnout for the event. Now, some of those may have been unfair, uh, but he has taken, and the Labour Party have taken, a fair bit of mocking about how few people turned up at their own rock concert. But here's the odd thing. Labour are seven points behind the Tories. Why a Labour not capitalising on the Conservative civil war that is being played out on a daily basis. If you think it's a lack of message, well, call me on 0345 973 Maybe you think Corbyn just doesn't cut the mustard, in which case text to 84850 and tweet and tell me why, 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 using Farage and LBC at LBC, Labour should be surely seven points in the lead, given the mess the Conservatives are in.